right. Hello, everyone. So, with the big news this week of an actual video footage of Pokemon Go being shown at one of the developer conferences, um, I think it would be relevant to talk about what is the best kind of phone you can use for the experience. Now, no one's really talked about this before. No one's gone into depth about what kind of phone would be the best kind of phone to use um, for the Pokemon Go experience. It Usually you don't think about something like this, you just use your regular phone, but hey, if you've got a new phone plan coming up, a new phone you want to get, maybe you want to think about getting one that's the best for this type of gaming experience. Maybe they come out with more games in the future about this kind of thing. Maybe Pokemon Go actually is something that's going to work out or not going to, you know, screw it over. So it's pretty big for Nintendo. Usually in the past, when Nintendo's done, is they just release stuff for their consoles and their handhelds. Way, way back in the day, you know, you got whatever Pokemon game came out for whatever the two versions were that were being released. In that case, it was either you know red and blue, and then the next ones came out, which were the big up step up, which was silver and gold, and you went from monotone colors to full color, and that was that was a big thing back then. And they even put in night mode and a night and day cycle, and it just blew your mind. Um, but for for Pokemon Go, now you're not being tied to one type of handheld anymore. Um, now you have a plethora of choices for the type of experience. Because hey, you're going to be playing this out and about everywhere. So you're going to look for something that has you know, certain features that you think will help the best for the phone that you get. And what are those features? Well, um, since you're going to be playing the usual Pokemon Adventure, you want to start out with something that's going to work for you in that type of environment. You're going to be all over the place, city, towns, mountain, near the water, out and about in the forest, everywhere. So you want something that's going to be rugged. Um, something that's going to, you know, take either have a lot of choices for a case or at least have something that if you dropped it, you'd be able to take those couple of drops or spills or falls or whatever. Um, other things you want to look out for is battery life. So in this case, you got to think about which ones have the most um, amp hours and which ones have the most um, milliwatt hours that you can use um, that will last, hopefully, all day, especially with this kind of game, which is going to be tying into GPS locations, so it knows where you're located, along with trying to connect to Wi-Fi or cell signal. Those two biggest things are going to suck up the battery life like crazy. So you want to factor in something that's going to have either a big battery built into it or maybe something that has a removable battery which we'll talk about later because those two biggest things may factor into what you get um, depending on vendor. Uh, availability now a lot of the phones coming out of like China and such or Hong Kong or Taiwan or Japan or wherever um, a lot of them you don't see here in the States um, you may see, like Lenovo makes some that you really don't see over here, or uh, Huawei makes some that makes a couple that you don't see over here. But they just keep them there in Asia, and they don't port them over here, um, either because of carriers or the market they're trying to appeal to. Um, so you probably want a phone that will be available in a high amount here 
for a few reasons, for parts, for accessories, for the ability to either swap it out when you can, if it breaks and they'll have one in stock. Um, it's just generally good to have a high available phone. That means that a lot of people are using it, a lot of people have come across issues that they can easily see and deal with. Um, cost will be another factor. I mean, yeah, if you can put in the money for a high quality phone, that's great. Uh, if not, you want to think about, okay, what kind of price range do I look into? Um, for a decent phone, you could run anywhere from maybe around, at least starting at like the 120 mark and going up from there. There's some in the $80 range, but I haven't seen them that are really, uh, any that are viable. Um, other ones, see here in the US it's tough because for multi-carrier, you, in other places you can usually have dual SIM cards and run both SIM cards at the same time. Um, here in the US not so much. So you want to think about, okay, what kind of carrier um, that you want to use. You got the big guys, which are T-Mobile, which is not great. Verizon, which is great, but sucks up the money. Uh, Sprint, which is okay. Or some of the other teeny tiny ones. Um, and then you have other contenders in the field, like Nexus from Google, which has the new dual multi-carrier um, SIM cards that were developed coming out of Germany, which allows you to hop between the two, I think it was T-Mobile and Sprint networks, and even do calling to Wi-Fi, which I missed from BlackBerry. BlackBerry, no, BlackBerry did a great thing back in the day, which you used to be able to, I don't know if you can anymore, um, do calls right over Wi-Fi. So let's say you're at a client site and you can't get a good cell signal because T-Mobile sucks, you can call over whatever Wi-Fi you're attached to as long as it gets the net, which was great. It was great. I wish they did more of this. Um, <clears throat> uh, other issues, okay, so good GPS. So you want one that has good GPS, but what does that mean? Because all phones do GPS. Is there an issue with GPS? Well, no. But when you're looking for a phone, um, and I'm trying to stay away from getting hard examples here. I'm not saying this is the phone you should get. You should get this phone and no other. No. This video is about showing, you know, getting you to think what kind of phone and looking into it and thinking about what features you want. Ever else on the net they say, okay, you want these top 10 things, you want these top 10 foods to eat, these top 10 books to read, these top 10 stuff to stuff, crap, whatever. We're not doing that. Where was I? So, really for GPS, I wouldn't worry about it unless they say or report on some kind of issue. So, you know, maybe the last thing you're looking into a phone, you pick out a phone, okay, it's a phone I want, or you're down to the top five phones you're looking at. Maybe bring up GPS, put that in with the phone on a Google search, see if anything comes up. If not, great. SD card slot um, for something like that we don't know what Nintendo has in store for um, features can we do recording or such do we need a lot of memory space for anything what's going to be in the cloud or do we have to back things up you might want to think about having SD card slot on the phone um, for another few reasons like it's nice to have a good music collection so Let's say you're, you don't want to suck up your uh, data plan for music. SD card would be good for that. Um, for pictures, great. Video, great. Um, maybe if you, if you can use it for like quick storage or whatever, for like streaming or for video capture. So you may want to think about that. If not, if you can forego the music, if you can forego everything else, then you probably don't need it. Um, 
So what we saw with the, um, the demo, and I'll probably do a different video on that because I want to go into depth about what I saw in the demo, um, which are mostly good things because it was, it was a good demo, but a lot of the stuff they showed, well, maybe wasn't consumer ready, but yeah. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so what we saw, you probably do want a good graphics processor, something that could handle the raw output of it showing you video coming out of the front um, camera along with overlaying whatever whatever Pokemon that was on you know the screen at the time or whatever else that's going to really chew up uh, graphical CPU resources so you probably want to look into something that has a good graphics processor I'm not saying something with you know crazy graphics but if it has something that focuses on it and it's a newer phone you are probably set. Uh, near field communication. So near field communication is you know you got a phone, you got either another phone or another device, and you bring the two together, and boop, there can relay info across from each other. Um, I don't think, as far as I can tell, they'll do something with this. So maybe you don't have to worry about that with your phone. But I don't know. So it's maybe something to keep in mind. Maybe we'll do stuff with like the uh, Amiibos. I really can't see it. I don't know what technology it uses. It'd be pretty cool though if they did something like that. It'd, they'd be smart if they did something kind of like that where you can have your little Amiibo in your phone and boop, there's your Pokemon Amiibo and there's your phone and it you know, transfers the data or whatever. If they were smart, they would do something like that. Um, Good Wi-Fi, we probably want something with good Wi-Fi because you're going to be moving about, trying to connect to hotspots, whether you're you know, using public ones, you're using the optimum ones, you're using whatever's in the area. Um, and optimum I mean, mean by uh, optimum Wi-Fi. So optimum is an internet service provider in the northeast area. And you have hotspots all over the place for Wi-Fi, as long as you're an account. But people usually take other accounts and use those. So you do want good Wi-Fi for connecting to Wi-Fi hotspots that are out and about. Um, so that's definitely something to look into uh, and consider. Do we need a good speakerphone? Probably not. Um, I really can't see us why you'd use one. You probably have headphones in any way. Um, just so either you're in a public space and that's why or because you are running around and you want to be able to quickly hear whatever it's doing um, so what else um, wireless charging is an issue but you might want to look into a phone that has quick charging technology Qualcomm which I don't have the charger for okay but Qualcomm is a good charger anyway so um, if you want to look for something that has it um, it's, it's preferable um, other things is USB type C but then you're going to need the adapter for it um, but as more people start getting other chargers and other phones that have it it's just going to be the go-to standard um, and then calling over Wi-Fi is going to help your battery life too, as well. Um, so, what type of phone really is that going on, what you want to look for? Um, up on here I have the uh, iPhone versions. Now, that's a good place to start for a few reasons. So, when you look for um, hardware, software, whatever, um, especially if you're like a systems administrator. Um, you kind of want to want to stay vendor neutral, so you don't have any kind of um, feelings towards the whatever you're, you feel like picking out. 
So there's no, you know, fanboyism um, in terms of Apple or Android. You want to go with whatever works best in your situation. The good thing about Apple in our cases is sameness. So the hardware is the same, the operating system is the same, screen size is the same, parts are easy to come by, um, stuff is easily able to be acquired, like accessories or uh, support because it's so widely available. Um, and because it's so available, a lot of the older generation, the five versions, um, the 5S, the 5C, is pretty cheap in price. Um, and the battery is good too for those. So it's, it is a viable option if you, if you want to stay in that kind of category. It should easily run um, the game um, pretty well. Mostly because I'm sure, I'm hoping that they've tested it on the platform, but I don't know. Um, they they just released the uh, new smaller iPhone, which will have the uh, six version six operating system. So that's something nice to think about going in that kind of camp. And the smaller phone, easy to carry, uh, but also has the same. I think it was an ARM9 Cortex processor uh, that allow you um, to still have that same powerful uh, processing um, capability. Um, for Android, um, this is kind of the Apple of the Android family, the Samsung Galaxy series. Samsung's done a big job with continuing their Sam their Galaxy line. Um, same kind of concept. They're all over the place. You can easily get parts for it. You can easily find support for it. Um, they probably tested it on one of the line of phones. So you can assume that it'll work um, pretty darn okay on it. Especially if these phones are really good at running whatever you throw on it. Um, I've seen the, the curve in person and it's, it's, it works great. You, you have to deal with the Samsung's own little you know fillings with Android, but whatever. If you can put up with that, it's a great phone to run with. Um, but then you have other wacky type of phones, which are these phones that other companies have put out, like Wiley Fox or Lenovo's K3 Note that you don't see around a lot but are great uh, purchases just because they were built well. Which I can't say much for the Lenovo laptops. The IBM servers are okay, but that's um, getting away from the point. The point is, um, if you want to try and go you know, towards the route of um, lesser known third party, I say third party, but just lesser known type of phone, um, something like this, or Lenovo series, or Huawei, or you know the other guys in the market, um, they have great phones in the um, $100 range, $120 range, that's, that'll be perfect for running the game. And um, you just have to deal with the fact that it's not as well known. So issues that arise or accessories are going to be a little trickier to come by. But, you know, you just deal with that. Um, things I would say to stay away from are, I, you could look into other types of uh, phones like Motorola. Motorola does good phones. However, some of their um, Moto X series phones are just a little bit too thin and they've cut down on the battery on these things. Um, so the battery's not as uh, capable as it once was and it just drains easily. Um, for if you want to go with a tablet, Samsung makes good note tablets. Um, and then the Nexus tablets are pretty good, but I'm not sure what to do about data. 
I mean, you could run tablets, and the tablets will run like the Nexus tablet. Um, there's the first gen, second gen. Nexus tablets will run well, and you could probably piggyback it off of either a phone or like a hotspot type of thing uh, if you feel like it. So that's that's a viable option, you know. Um, or stuff like Wiley Fox, which is I think a UK brand. So, looking forward into other videos, um, what else we got to think about? Got to think about phone accessories. So, what kind of case? What kind of um, you know little add-ons you want to do to like armbands or belt buckle type things? You know these guys, the old style. Um, crap like Blackberry still always have. Um, also solar chargers, I'm, I'll do another video on solar chargers because you'll be out and about. Um, what kind of solar chargers should you look into for the phone? You know, you want something that will charge it on the go. You might be, you know, not, not a Starbucks for a thousand miles or whatever. How are you going to charge the thing? How are you going to find that elusive uh, critter hiding in the grass? Um, then bike holders, I probably won't talk much about that, but you know, if you're going to be using the bike around a lot, like I probably will in the city, in New York City here, um, then I want to think about does the phone you're looking at have a bike charger or a good bike, I'm not saying charger, a good bike holder, holster, thing, holder, phone thing, whatever. Um, and yeah, the so besides that, um, I'll probably do a video on solar chargers, and then I'll do another video talking about the uh, um, developer preview of the game for Pokemon Go that they just, you know, popped up on the net a little while ago. Because I think there's some very interesting uh, things you can gleam out of that uh, video, um, especially from like a beta standpoint. It's very interesting. The type of little uh, beta showcase they put together for games what they try to show off as highlights and what you can take away from it but it's whatever uh, so yeah you can expect that you know in the future until then